Hello, my name is Cesar, and this is the fifth video on the naming series uh, where we are live coding a naming convention manager on Python. Uh, the idea is uh, that your code relying on the metadata on names don't need to take so many assumptions. Uh, so if you ever change your naming convention, it still will work, right? Uh, so in the last video, we did a little bit of token management. Uh, so we can now add, flash, and remove tokens that allows us to move all the hard code ones into the test environment. So each test now set up its own tokens and it's kind of a standalone thing. Uh, so that's more reliable, that's better. And today I would like to do something very similar with the rules. So right now we have one rule and it's, it's a string, there's a pattern there but I would like to have many rules so you can choose a different one depending on the environment, on your context. So maybe if you're renaming files, you want to use one, and if you're dealing with DCC stuff, you want to use another one, and so on and so forth. So that would be today's uh, goal. <laughs> so let's uh, get started. And before doing any of that, uh, I would like to address a few things from the last video. So this, this is passing, but well, but if you see there, we're running six tests so far, and that's a problem because uh, the way unit tests work, in order to discover all the tests, the method should be named test underscore whatever. And in this case, I didn't do that. I just put, put the remove token. So that test actually never was uh, run. So if I do that and I run this, now we are running seven tests, but oh surprise, the piece of code, the piece of non-tested code is failing. <laughs> so that I, I think it's a nice accident that shows you that when you think that you know what you're doing, like I don't need to test this because this is so simple. Well, it's not. <laughs> that happened. Uh, so let's fix that. Uh, and there was a uh, uh, false is not true, line 74, so it's this one. So what happened here is we're adding a token, then we remove the token, and we want to make sure that the return value of that remove is true. So it actually removed the thing, but it's not removing it. So let's take a look. And if you go to remove token, the first line is is testing for the truthiness of the value under that key. So unfortunately, and this is going to change for required tokens like test over here, uh, when we add it, we set a value of none under that name. So this will return none even if the key is there, so it will never be removed. So what I really want to test here is, do you have a key equals to name on the token dictionary? Right? Do you have this token? So let's fix that. Uh, uh, so let's just do that function. So let's say uh, test has. And what I want to do is to, yeah. So let's say name equal foo or whatever. And then what I want to do is uh, add a token under th that name. Uh, ask for uh, naming that uh, has token. And then I want to test that uh, this should be through, right? Then the next thing would be remove that token. And then I want to do a has token name. And then, and let me, oops. And then I want to do that with the result. 
So after remove it, it should be false before it should be true. So let me run this. Uh, it's failing, which is good. So now let's implement that. So this is has token. We get a name. And then we basically return if name is in uh, tokens dot keys. So now we can come here and change this by the has token name. So that should do it. Let me run the test. And yes, that fixed the issue. There's a few more things I would like to do. For example, I would like to change this oops, to underscore tokens because now that we can add and remove tokens programmatically, it makes sense to be an internal thing. So the test should still pass and that's the case. And then I would also like to uh, flash the tokens at the beginning of each test instead of at the end. So that uh, make it a little bit more reliable. So we can, we have like a controlled environment. I hope that makes sense. And also let me add that here. So we make sure we always start from a clean state. So this should pass and that's the case. Cool. So let's, uh, let's take a look at rules. What? Okay, we still have a little bit of time. So I said that I want to do something very similar with uh, rules. I want to be able to add a rule, remove a rule, on flash rules. So let's let's make it easy. Um, just copy this and paste it here. And look for token, and this will be. Uh, rule now and token Oops. and let's uh, just replace this by true okay cool so I want to flash the rules that's good um, to add other rule okay so add rule uh, this will be very different so we don't have that so we need to pass a name probably so let's say test and then we need to pass a pattern so let's say pattern and the pattern let's make it this one so that kind of makes sense right so we add that to the rules Cool. we can flash them uh, we can remove rules so here we need to add a rule again cool that makes sense and then to, in order to test if we have a rule No, sorry. Okay, that makes sense to me. And if I run this, uh, all the rule case are failing, which is good. So let's implement that. Uh, so let me just take this, paste it here. Okay, so let's uh, token and replace that by rule and do that there. Cool. So we have a few problems. Uh, first, there's no rules, so let's. Oops. And I don't want to remove that yet, uh, but we are going to. So, okay, add rule. So this should be very different. So we have name, we have a pattern. 
So the first thing, if um, has rule, if there's a rule under that name, I want to return false. Otherwise, rules name equal to pattern. That should do it. Flash rules flashes. Yes, should do it. Remove it, should do it. And that should do it. So that looks good. Let me run the test. And that's passing. So that was easy. Uh, let's, uh, now that we have add and remove rules, uh, do the same with the test. So do it programmatically here. So now we can do flush rules, right? Oops. Cool. And then I want to add, do I have that? I think I have that uh, somewhere. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Okay. So that's fine. But now, so we are adding, yeah, let me do it like that. We are adding that rule here. That's cool. But now we need, when we solve the name, we need to have like a, a active rule concept. Uh, because right now, which one do you want to pick? So maybe we can put here like a set active equals true or something yeah yeah that makes sense so we need and then we can get the active rule so let's do it here time is over so let's try to do it like super quick uh so cool so what I want to do is to, um, yeah, why not? Oh, damn it. Add a rule, uh, make it uh, the default, set uh, the active, sorry, set active, equal true. And then I want to ask the library for the active rule, yes, and then I want to assert equals uh, that the result is equal to the pattern. Cool. So now, uh, okay, rules, let's do it just like the tokens. So this now would be a dictionary and we have an active like reserve thing. This is known by default. Uh, flushes should uh, say rules active should be equal to none. Okay, and then I should be able to ask for active rule. And this, uh, so I get the key from uh, uh, rules and I ask for this active thing. And then I return rules.get that key. Okay. Set active, it's not there because at rule, okay. So set active, and this will be equal to false by default. Okay, that's cool. So we add that, oops. And then if set active, I going to say rules active equal to name. That's cool. So now I can get rid of this. 
and there's a few errors. Uh, so now here rule will be equal to active rule. Same thing here. Can I do that? No. So rule will be equal to active. Cool. So there's no more syntax errors. And if I run this, none. Oh, okay. That's fair enough because I have to set the environment now. So I did that here. I did that here. And if I run this, all tests are passing. So that's cool. Uh, so we have an active rule. Uh, we can certainly do more, but I think it's a good uh, first step. And we basically remove all the hard code things from naming, so that, that's good. In the next video, we're probably playing a little bit more with this, testing different rules, how they solve, and then probably uh, define a little bit better what's a token, because the current implementation has some uh, problems. Uh, so we, we are going to improve that. So thanks for watching. I hope you like it and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.